Hello, welcome to this demonstration. Uh, so this demonstration is on uh, heaps. Uh, we have seen uh, in the previous lectures about how we could overflow the stack and uh, uh, be able to do malicious things by essentially modifying the return address which is stored on the stack. Uh, we can also do something very similar by overflowing uh, heap locations. So this very uh, basic introduction to a heap uh, exploit uh, would first take us through how a heap uh, is organized uh, in the uh, program uh, and uh, then we would actually use the exploit. Uh, we would be sharing this particular code. So, you could uh, download this code from your virtual machine box and uh, uh, run this code after compiling it. So, in order to run this uh, specific code, uh, you could do a make uh, as make clean over here and make. So, uh, what we see here is that there are in fact uh, three programs t0.c, t1.c and t2.c. Uh, in this specific video, we will be looking at t0.c. So, let us open it out t0.c. Okay, so, this uh, essentially is a very small c program where we have two malloc statements that gets invoked. One to allocate a structure data underscore t which is of uh, 64 bytes and has name. Uh, the other one is f which essentially allocates in the heap uh, this structure f p underscore t. So, note that f p underscore t has just one element uh, which is a function pointer uh, f p. So, then what we do is we initialize the function pointer in f uh, to no winner. So, note that no winner is here and uh, it simply prints uh, level has not been passed. Now, uh, there is another printf and then a string copy. Now, string copy uses d uh, name that is d name and copies argument 1 that is a command line argument uh, into d name and then there is a, a, a invocation to f f p. So, uh, what you would expect over here is first the string copy gets invoked and then uh, the fp function which is pointing to no winner that would get invoked and uh, you would get uh, uh, this particular printf getting executed that is level has not been passed. So, let us see that happening. So, we uh, run t0 and give it a few inputs like this uh, a few uh, a short length. Uh, argument and what we see is that uh, it gets printed that level has not been passed. Okay. So, uh, to before we go into how to actually use the exploit um, and by now if you have been following the course then you would have uh, figured out that the exploit is due to this vulnerability in the string copy. Uh, note that the string copy uh, copies something from argument 1 uh, into d name. So, d name is a fixed length of 64 bytes uh, and argument 1 is controlled by the user through the command line arguments. So, the argument 1 can cause d name to overflow if it has a length which is greater than 64 bytes. So, uh, let us just go through how this program executes with the right input first. So, we will as usual run gdb with uh, t0 as input list thing as usual uh, put a breakpoint in line number 34 and we run this uh, program giving the same short input string a uh, there are around 5 to 6 a's over here. Uh, so, what we have stopped as we have seen before uh, in the previous videos is that if we have stopped at line number 34 and importantly right now there is no malloc uh, has been called as yet. As, as we have seen in the theory classes uh, since the, uh, malloc has not been invoked as yet the initial size of the heap is 0. In fact, uh, there is no heap uh, present in this particular program at this particular uh, point during the execution. So, we can see this by this info proc map command. And uh, what we look at over here as we have seen in the theory is that we have the virtual address space for this process. Uh, we see the 
uh, various segments in the process like the uh, which are defined from by the start address and the end address. So we have the uh, various uh, segments for the T0 program. Uh, we have uh, the uh, libc, uh, stack, vdso and so on. So what is missing here you would notice is that at this particular time since we have not execute any malloc as yet there is no heap that is present. So we will single step to another li line and see that the malloc has actually been executed. We can now run this info proc map again and uh, we would see that a heap has now been assigned to the program. So what has happened internally is that rather since this was the first malloc uh, that is invoked in this particular program, the pt malloc code which has got linked uh, with this particular program through libc has invoked the operating system and it has requested for a large chunk of memory of 132 kilobytes. So uh, this memory has got attached to the locations 804B000 to 806C000 and the size is 132 kilobytes. So you can verify that this size uh, 21000 which is in hexadecimal notation over here is in fact 132 kilobytes. So now uh, we will also look at what the address of uh, D is D. and what we see is that D has a value 804B008. So what uh, PT malloc has done internally is that since you have invoked the function requesting uh, structure data underscore t to be uh, allocated in the heap. So pt malloc code once it has obtained the 132 kilobytes of uh, memory would split this memory into two components. One component which would be slightly larger than 64 bytes because data underscore t is uh, 64 bytes and the remaining component is the free uh, chunk of memory which has not yet been utilized. What we see over here is the address of d we see that it is at an offset of uh, 804B008. Now if you compare this with the start location of uh, heap, you see that uh, it is 8 bytes uh, from the starting location of uh, the heap. The bytes uh, 804B000 to 804B007 uh, contains the metadata for this particular chunk of memory. Now, we can look at this metadata by um, executing something like this. We are just dumping the heap location um, and we could specify the address 0x804b000. So in this particular time, uh, we have the metadata which, is to, which will be stored over here. Currently it has a value of 49. So 49 uh, is in hexadecimal 0100. 1001. Uh, the LSP of this is 1 indicating that uh, the previous is in use and uh, 100 would indicate the size that is allocated for this chunk. Uh, so this would be slightly greater than 64 bytes and uh, this you could actually validate later. Okay, so once we uh, single step further, uh, we would also see that uh, F would get allocated. So we will look at the address for f p slash x uh, to obtain the thing for f and we would see that f is uh, at a location 804b050. So note the offset of f from the base of the heap and uh, we will compute actually what happens uh, internally. So uh, starting from the base, so uh, we will first move this thing into the <coughs> programming mode uh, and move to the hexadecimal notation and uh, let us start out from the base and we see that the base of the heap is uh, 804B000 um, and the initial 8 bytes uh, comprises of the metadata for the first memory allocation that is for D that is so it would be 8 bytes. So uh, 804B008 gives you the memory address for D. Now uh, since the size of uh, struct 
uh, data underscore t is 64 bytes. So, uh, therefore, the uh, pt malloc would have added 64 bytes to this. So, 64 in uh, hexadecimal notation is uh, 40, 40. So, this is uh, 804b048. So, this location onwards uh, signifies the end of d. Now, uh, the next allocation is f. Now, f also has um, metadata, uh, the, uh, it has uh, two words of metadata and, uh, and therefore, it will also have um, 8 bytes of metadata. So, if we add 8 to this, we will get uh, 804B050, which precisely is what uh, is the address of f. So, in this way, what we see is that we have seen how the memory is organized uh, at this particular point in time. Uh, it has contiguous chunks of D and F, which are uh, placed uh, side by side. And uh, the only thing which uh, separates them is some metadata information uh, uh, for the F. Now, we will see how we can actually overflow D uh, using this uh, string copy and passing an argument which is uh, longer and uh, how we could actually modify the contents of f. So, first of all, let us continue to uh, single step and uh, since we are given a small input, uh, we can go through string copy and we can now look at the uh, heap again. And what we see is that since our input is all is a couple of a's and a has a ascii value of uh, 41 in hexadecimal so those values are actually stored uh, from this location onwards now uh, since data underscore t has a size of 64 so 64 bytes from here would end the uh, the uh, structure data underscore t and then we would have f and f since we have initialized to no winner uh, the the value of no winner is present here so we can see that 0 8 0 4 8 4 b 4 in fact specifies the address of no winner. So, that we can check like this p slash x no winner disassemble no winner and uh, what you would see is uh, the start address of no winner is indeed 0 8 0 4 8 4 b 4. Now, what we want to do is that we want to modify this uh, program we want to subvert the execution. So, that uh, this uh, address in the heap uh, which corresponds to no winner is modified uh, to that of winner. In order to do this, we would first uh, require to determine the address of winner. So, that would can be obtained by disassemble of uh, the winner function and you would see that uh, the winner function has the ad starts at the address 0804849b. So, we could actually write this down somewhere. Uh, so, what we have done is we have copied the uh, start address of uh, the winner function and note that we need this start address to overwrite the uh, no winner function location present in the stack. So, let us see how uh, we do this from here things are quite uh, similar to what we have done so far uh, in, uh, in the past uh, uh, in this particular course. We can first determine that the amount of uh, in order to overflow this particular uh, data underscore t structure, we would require 72 uh, inputs uh, before all of this gets um, filled up and then we need to specify the um, address for our malicious function, uh, which in this case is winner. So, we have already done this for you. Um, so, this is present in payload 2. Uh, so, you see over here that uh, what payload 2 does is that it creates 72 A's followed by the address 0804849B. So, this as you can re re recollect is the little Indian notation. So, we could run this particular program as follows. Uh, so, we have simplified it for you. All, you. all that you need to do is run T0, uh, specify a dollar and then uh, dot slash payload 2.
and this would result in this payload 2 getting executed. Uh, the string uh, 72 A's followed by this address of uh, winner would be then passed to T0 and uh, we see uh, that uh, it has resulted in a heap overflow successful. So, this happens because the winner function gets executed. So, what we have done is that we have essentially overflowed D with a lot of A's in fact 72 A's and then specified the address of the no winner function uh, which essentially replaces uh, this invocation this FP uh, thing with winner thus the winner uh, function would get executed. So, there are a lot of interesting attacks you can actually do with the heap uh, but uh, and uh, some of them are actually uh, uploaded to the website for this particular course and uh, in the next video lectures we look at some more things uh, specifically with the heap. Thank you.